This is the last part of our tutorial on creating attributes. Let's look at the last mode for attributes. We'll type in our Batman command and let's see what we've got. We're going to modify this attribute that we just modified for the preset. So we'll turn preset off and we'll turn multiple lines on. By doing this, the default value here cannot be changed anymore. We do now see a special box here. We can open what's called the multi-line editor. So we're going to select that here. We're going to see how this works because this is also a very nuanced kind of editing format. Here we can see we have some text formatting options here. We're allowed to basically insert fields, put underlines and overlines for text, undo and redo any settings or text that we were modifying here. This ruler toggle is nice. We usually see it on whenever we're dealing with actual multi-line text, and this is mimicking multi-line text with these multiple lines, so to speak. So if I turn the ruler on or off, we can see that some of those grips and icons are now gone. By turning it back on, the top two arrows seem to be gone, but if I stretch this box a bit, then those arrows come back along with a little box at the top to kind of show a little grid to give us some spacing ideas. So I could actually use that to space this out quite nicely. We can space it for about four characters, so you can see how I'm looking at the three dots at the top to do that. That's quite nice, actually. So I'm going to leave that right around there. That should be more than enough to accommodate four digits or four characters. Before we click OK here, we do have a drop down here. And this drop down is extensive. There are many settings here. We can insert fields just like with this button here, but we can also import text if we have text in another file format. Then we can find and replace text. These are all settings that we've seen when we're actually dealing with multi-line text. So changing cases is here, setting them to all caps automatically, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We can set a background mask. The editor settings have even more settings here. We can always display as this command right here, which I'll get into in another tutorial. Then we can show toolbars, rulers, check spelling, change our settings, apply or add certain words to our dictionary so that they're not automatically seen as incorrect, such as my last name. There's a J and a T next to each other, so that one can be a bit strange. And the text highlight color can also be toggled here. So there's a lot of different settings that we can find here for text formatting. We're not going to get too thick into the weeds with this one. We're just going to click OK here, and we're going to see what happens. So now we are in the edit attribute itself, and it's basically saying, okay, multiple lines is turned on and we've changed this toggle right here. And basically what we did here is we left the text as it was. If I go back to this, what if I actually change the data in here? Because now we've made the multi-line text section large enough to accommodate more digits. Let's actually utilize it. So we're going to change our text here to 1001. Doesn't quite fit, so I'm going to make this a little bigger just so we have a bit of a gap. There we go. And if we really wanted to have multiple lines, we can then press Enter, and we can put in more data here. For example, let's say that I wanted to include the material here of the store. So it's going to be made out of wood. So now we have enough space for that. I'll just make this a bit bigger to accommodate so we have a bit of a gap. Perfect. So now we're going to click OK here, and we can see that our default value here has changed completely. So now I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to click Apply and OK. Before I do, you can see that now the multiple lines or multi-line function is turned on under Mode, and we're going to click OK. And we did this here in the model space area, not within a block, because it will apply to our blocks as we insert them now, and the setting will not just disappear like preset did. Let's insert our block one more time, and let's see how this multi-line set of options works. So here it is. Let's put it right around here. We can actually see that the new set of multi-lines are in place. They're kind of covering each other, so we'll want to go into the block editor and actually move them. Luckily, we don't quite need to because we didn't set them to be in a fixed point. So I'll show you how that works right after I insert. Before I show you, of course, we do have our prompt dialog showing the new default value that we put in, and we can change this from here as well. So if I needed to, I can change this. You can see that what it does, which is a bit odd, is it stretches out the multi-line boundary that we set. So it's a little bit too far stretched, uh, not far fetched, <laughs> which is uh, almost rhymes with what I just said. Um, and that's quite interesting. I believe that if we created a new attribute definition and set multiple lines ahead of time and we set our boundary size ahead of time then that would be fixed but because we're toggling it after the fact and modifying it like this it basically stretches it out if we try to edit it as we place a block so you may want to have them set in stone or you may want to be ready to adjust them as you go but of course creating them the correctly ahead of time 
can circumvent this as well. So we do have our text formatting options just like we did before. We're just going to click OK here. Well, we, of course, we could change our text here in the heat of the moment. And I'm just going to click OK. And then basically, we're done editing that. We're now going to click OK here. And there it is. We now have our attributes and our block. Now, of course, luckily, I can select this attribute here. I can move this text down. This one here, I did not. Uh, uncheck the lock mechanism so I can go back and uncheck that. So this one has a grip, this one does not. So this text is essentially fixed and that's okay. It's a little oversight. So basically that's how this works. Now we can modify that and looks like the multi-line setting is quite interesting and does have lots of uses for attributes. Thank you very much for watching our tutorial on how to create attribute definitions and how to modify the different modes within attributes themselves. There's many different uses for these. For example, you can create a block with lots of different text for a title block, associate different attributes for the text itself that needs to be input next to the titles and labels that need to always be there. And then you can set it so that your prompt pops up with all of those prompts for all the attributes. And you can type in your data per project and set it up really nicely, consistently, each time ahead of time. And that's just one use for attributes. There's so many different uses for these attributes and their definition. Once again, my name is Ari. I'm with Digital Drafting Systems, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.